guys, my name is Jana. Today I invite you to my new video about new board game, Human Punishment The Beginning. This is semi-cooperative game for three to six players. And in a moment I will show you this game, all components closer and tell you how to play on this board game. So enjoy watching. I am Nova. I belong to the ghost team. I can move quickly, which is helpful in combat. Well, who am I fighting for? Let's check. Of course, I will be loyal to the human race. After all, machines cannot take over the world. We must win this fight. Who on the team will be on my side and who will be the traitors? I will find out about it soon. The network is at risk. I have to deliver the data fails there as soon as possible. It's our firewall against the human punishment virus. Those despicable machines. Most firewalled network data I have a chance to find in the sector 1 and 2. I have already reached boost level 2, so I can take two data tokens. But can I find the right ones? Oh yes, they are blue. So now I need to get to the network. Walking through the city will be the shortest, but here is already dangerous. More and more outlaws in the streets, riots are increasing. In addition, a robot appears in the factory. It's only the first level, but I can't beat it without a weapon. Our soldier, Havok, has been acting weird lately. Most of the team vote for his imprisonment. He is now sitting in an isolation cage, at the mercy of the legion or our decisions. For now, no one is convinced by his explanations. Dryden is in the city, but he is weak in combat. He is a medic, not soldier. Maybe he can heal me later, but I hope he won't have to. For now, I choose the longer path. I'm going to headquarters. There I can get some weapons. Why decoy go to the junkyard? All he had to do was take the data tokens from sector 1 and put it on the network. He explains that he didn't not find the blue one but only found grey data. But when he placed it in the junkyard, will help the fallen. Was he on their side? Had he betrayed us? I don't believe him. But now I have another problem. Robot. In the factory, if I am well, I should kill him. And then the road to the network is open for me. Machines are everywhere. Fighting them is demanding because now they are stronger. Outlaws ignite new revolts and it is more and more difficult to maintain security in the city. The ghost team must compare. I am fighting on the human side. I put my thumb up when they ask me. But now the player on the machine side know who I am. It's touching me. No, just not that. Now I have became machines too. How do we start the game? From the choice of the hero. In this prototype version, we will be choosing from six different characters. There is also a dog that will be accompany one of the heroes. Characters asymmetry is not only about the differences between their basic abilities, but before I will tell you about them, take a look for basic hero's abilities. The first is the number of available actions. In this case only one, but it can increase this value in the character development tree, same as other attributes. Then we have movement. These characters can move two locations. Next is range. The fist symbol indicates the power of the attack. On the left you can see the amount of damage dealt and on the right how many red influence cards we can play. I will show this later in the rules. It is similar in the case of defense, I mean the shield symbol. On the left it is value, on the right how many blue cards we will play can strengthen our defense. Next is the character's health level. Another attribute is the number of program cards a player can have. Finally, the player's hand limit and the number of cards he can draw from his deck. And now the differences. Each character's deck will consist of different cards. Below you can see what cards this character has. These are blue cards with values from 1 to 4. Red card is also appear in this deck, but only with a value of minus 5 values. 
and the grey cards from X. By comparison, this hero has all color and kinds of cards in his deck. There is a power-up table in the center of the each character board. However, each character has different improvements here, which they in unlock by performing different actions. Another difference is the bonus. Each character has is completely different. And below you see the benefits. Are the advantage of a particular hero, in this case the strengthening of the action in the city, and disadvantage, I mean some kind of fails. We also have a character that receives its own dedicated deck of cards. Nova will be able to carry not one but two data tokens. The other heroes only have space for one token. However, they will fit other things, such as scanners, for which she has no place. Objective cards increase the asymmetry between the heroes. Each player is deal one such card and must complete a goal to win this game. Of course, these goals are secret. The same like this little loyalty card. All in all, the most important card in the game. That is, on buff of which faction we fight. In this case, Nova, who is human, will be loyal to the machine. Depending on the number of players, the deck of loyalty cards will consist of other cards. For example, in a three-player game, the deck will contain two human cards and one random machine card or legend or fallen. So, for sure, one of the players will be the bad guy. Ok, now let's move on to the main board. I will tell you about the locations and possibilities here. The main board is divided into different locations marked with numbers. We can move between them using these arrows. Each of these locations has different actions that can be performed. There are over 20 of them here and I will not cover each of them, but I will try to show you, in general, what can be done in each of these places. Where we start will be decided by the result of the die roll. In this case it's location 5, so monolith and here I set up my character stand. And now I can perform the action from this space. In the center part of the board there is a city that consists of three sectors. There is a darknet, a factory and a part of the city and it's all one location. But let's focus on the city where, as you can see, we have four important tracks. The first shows the level of writing, the second level of morale, the next level of our resources and the last level of security. Here we will be performing various actions that will be affect and change the levels on these tracks. At the beginning we will place the markers in designated places. For a resources level the marker will appear at position 10 in a 3 player game. And now, for example, when taking action number 3 in a city we can draw 3 resources cards but we need to reduce the level of the resources track by 1. And if the marker is on the track is this yellow part, this action is blocked. In case of the writing track, each time the marker is on this yellow space, players suffer the consequences. I mean, we lower the morale level by one each turn. And if this marker is on any of the red areas on this track, we will draw cards from the appropriate event deck. And so, in the case of the morale level drops to the yellow area, players draw one less card. But if the level drops to the space with the skull, the outlaws win. Likewise, the machines will win when resources are exhausted. And when security reaches red, either the outlaws or legion will win. Therefore, during the game by performing actions in the city will influence the level of markers on these tracks, as well as other game effects they will be affected. The first location is divided into three sectors. There are data tokens in each of these sectors that we want to deliver to the network. And now, depending on whom we support, we will want to place data tokens in different colors on the network. The red ones, respectively, when we want machines to win. 
but when we are fighting for the human, we will install blue data tokens on the network to protect it from the human punishment virus. In order to be able to collect these tokens, we will perform slightly different actions in each sector. The types of data tokens in these piles are shown in these charts. So in the second sector, the data token pile are consist of three gray, nine red and six blue tokens. So machines will be happy to come here because it's easy to get data with a virus here. Each time we take such a token, it should be marked on the track next to it. If we find a token that we don't want, we can put it in the junkyard. There are also different actions here. We leave our tokens hidden here, but during the game, by performing an action from this place, we will be able to look at them. And here is important information. If there are minimum three grey data tokens, the fallen win the game. In the Nexus location, we will be able to expand the secret human weapon, I mean Apex Mech construction. I will come back to this board in a moment. In Monolith, we have an action in which by spending 5 points from cards, we will get a Rikon card with a strong bonus. Again, this card's bonus allows you to see the cards in another player's hand. Hmm, strong. In the headquarters, I mean location 4, we will be able to perform an action in which players may imprison someone by voting, that means put them in isolation cube. But most of all, we will be able here to buy weapons. Here we can see the cost of each weapon. We spend 3 points to buy a pistol and 5 points for a rifle. Of course, weapons will increase our abilities. First of all, the pistol will allow you to deal 1 damage and increase your strength by 1. How can you buy such a weapon? The principle of purchase also applies of purchase of program cards. So when you perform a buy action, you must ensure a card or cards from your hand with the total value of the required cost. When we pay cards with minus, they don't matter. We only look at the value. But it is important that we have to pay with the same color of cards. But I can't pay with two different cards suits anymore. I mentioned about prison, I mean isolation. We can put a hero here if the team votes so. The player can try to get out of here in three ways. Either it will be a vote of the players again, or Legion decides it, or must resolve the interrogation card and roll the die. However, what is important, two players receive, in addition to their goal and loyalty card, they receive a Legion or General token. These functions allow these players to make decisions when resolving certain event cards. Additionally, the General controls the secret human weapon, I mean Apex. Before I will tell you about the network, I will show you an additional board, I mean the common center. Here, among other things, we place such tokens of the secret weapons that I just mentioned. The blue construction is the human secret weapon, and the red one is the elite Deus machine. So we set markers on the tracks at the start of the game. When they reach space 9, this construction spawn on the main board. Apex will appear at the Nexus location and will move all the way to the space where it will defend the network. Deus will appear at the factory and will also move towards the network to infect it. If these two mechs meet in this space, they will destroy each other. But when Deus gets to the network, the machines win. Alright, let's go back to the command center board. In addition to the mech's construction tracks, we will move the marker along the threat track. When this token reaches to the red space with a skull, the outlaws or the legion win. Enemy tokens will appear in individual piles here. These tokens are stacked from level 1 to level 3. 
Each pile is a different type, type of enemy, and these numbers are assigned to those on the red die, which will indicate it which type of enemy will spawn on the board. So now, one of the most important location on the map, the network, where we will place data tokens. And as you already know, either red or blue tokens will appear here depending on who we are in favor of. Of course, it can be also the gray data tokens. So, when all three spaces of the bottom row are full, the human face ends. This means that we will reveal second level of even cards by removing the first level and we also pull down first level enemies tokens from all piles to reveal the second level. The same thing happens when we fill the next level with three data tokens in the network. This is the moment when the machines face end. Likewise, level 3 event cards will appear, the same like level 3 all enemies tokens on the command center board. However, what is very important in this phase and what will be difficult for me to show, but I will try to do this. So, now all players close their eyes. They hold their hand out in front of them. Human players, thumbs up. Now the machine is opening the eyes and finds out who's playing as a human. When we play with five or six players, both the machine and the legion, if you play, can touch chosen person and infect them. You know, drag them to their side. Such a player became a machine or legion from the known. His previous aspirations, loyalty, have changed completely. When we fall all three spaces of the next level, the game ends. Players may place data tokens in the space above to postpone the end of the game a bit, but when the last tokens on the third track appears, the game is over. Now we turn over all tokens and check who won. Specify a winner in each column, in this case the machines in the first column, but human in the two other columns. The game will be won by whoever has the more winning of columns. If there was a T, the faction that has the most tokens in the network wins the game. Get to know about the order of the game. As you can see, it begins with the action phase, the first step of which is drawing cards. When we start the game, each player draws three cards in their hand during the preparation phase. And later, in the action phase, each player draws as many cards as indicated by the number of his character board. In this case, it will be the next three cards. Of course, keeping in mind our current card limit. Now we play actions and how many we can play them will indicate our current level. We can also move a certain number of locations on the main board. So my hero can move two locations. Let's say it goes to sector 3 to get a data token. And I think this is a good time to show you that in the deck of each hero, apart from the cards marked on the board, there are also cards with a character's special ability. And each hero has a different ability. After the player plays an actions, the enemy actions face starting. And now the orange die has to be rolled. Its result will show the location where enemies activate if they are on the board. In this case, it is the sixth location. Then we roll the red die, the result of which will show us which enemy activates. So in this case, it will be five. And now two more white dice will determine where to exactly place the enemy token. So in this example, we are looking for a space with number 5. The enemy appears in the Nexus location. If a player was standing here and the enemy was activating, he would attack the hero. Each enemy's stats are shown at the bottom of the token. This enemy has 3 life points, so you need to deal 3 wounds to kill him. He has a 2 shields and can draw 1 blue card from the resource deck. Her score will increase his defense level, in this case by 2. However, his strength when he attacks is 1. This means that he will deal 1 damage. 
but he may draw two cards, he draws them from the resource deck, the same like with defense action, until they appear red ones. Their value will strengthen his strength. When a hero attacks or defends, he will play influence cards from his hand. After resolving the enemy action phase, the event phase is resolved. Now draw the top card of the event deck and reveal it. The players then vote by playing their influence cards. So cards with plus, minus or axe will be played depending on the final result I want to get. We also add a card from a resource deck and then all cards are secretly shuffled so that you cannot see who vote and we count the result. In this case it was minus two so you couldn't get seven or more and now you have to deal with the red effects. In this case we lower the morale level by two and additionally the Legion and the General have to draw one wound card. And now I will show you some other event cards. For example, there are events in which the Legion decides which variant to choose. But there are also such events uh, where the General will decide about the option. So, as you can see, including these functions in this board game is very important. Thank you guys for watching and uh, for your attention. If you like this video, it will be awesome if you leave a like and uh, join to my subscribers. Take care of yourself and bye bye.